All right, here's where things are going to get interesting. While I've got one long continuous board, I'm going to go ahead and cut this rabbit right here. So I have a rabbit that sits like that. That's this piece here. And that goes all the way around all four sides of the box. Uh, let's see if I've got a picture of the inside of the box here. Okay, on this drawing you can see how on one, two, the third side you can't see, but you can see it's a mirror of that, that rabbit that goes around where the lid will sit. And then there's a cutout piece here. We're going to come back and cut that piece later. We're going to cut the whole thing at this depth right here. So I can look at my drawing. It's going to be 5 eighths of an inch down, and the outside edge will be 3 eighths of an inch. So since we overcut this by a 16th, that's going to be, let's see here, 3 eighths would be 6 sixteenths. So this would actually be 5 sixteenths for us by 5 eighths. Okay, on my drawing, the arrows point up. This is the front. I want to make my cut on the back. And we're going to make that at 5 eighths of an inch. Dent. Nope, I take that back. This is the big one. That's the small one. We want to do the 3 eighths of an inch. This time I have my combination square. So we need to measure down 3 eighths of an inch. Make sure that's right. One, two, three eighths. Get that so that line is right on the shoulder. All right, three eighths of an inch. Yep, X that out. One, two, three eighths of an inch. And we use a straight edge to connect those lines. All right, I have my Harbor Freight straight edge here. Line that up on my two lines. And that's where the rabbit will be. Okay, we also want to go, I want to expose three-eighths of an inch showing. So I'm going to do the same thing here. One, two, three-eighths. One, two, three-eighths. I really don't need to draw this line, but it makes an easy reference when I do my depth. And I can pick at any point of the board. All right, there's the mark for my rabbit. So we're going to cut out a square 3 8 by 3 8 While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and set up for my dado so we can go make that cut at the same time. So we've got a dado cut that's a quarter of an inch wide, and it's 3 quarters of an inch from the bottom. So we'll do the same thing we did here. I can use my eighths marking. There's three quarters right there. Three quarters right there. And I'm going to go ahead and put my one inch mark. So three quarters plus a quarter. That makes my bottom panel. that comes out. There's my rabbit. And that part's going to come up for my dado. And my dado will also be 3 eighths of an inch from the outside. This will be a little trickier one. So from the front, we're going to measure back 3 eighths of an inch. One, two, three. There's my height, and we're going to do that on both sides because I don't know which side I'm going to end up using on the dado yet. One, two, three. Okay, so now, since this is a straight cut, we're going to use the uh, dado blade on the table saw to make this cut. 
And I'm going to bring my combination square just to measure that as we go. This will be pretty easy because once I set the depth for one of these, I have it for both. This would be a good time, actually, to use our practice block to do our practice cuts on. So let's go ahead and set that up at the same time. And we're going to cut on the inside where the miters are. So there's three-fourths by one, three-fourths and one. And then down from the top, we're going to go three-eighths, three-eighths, three-eighths. And connect the lines. We'll use the short block for our practice run, and then we'll take the long block through after that. All right, if there's a sled on the table, just lift that up, carefully set that aside, move anything else out of the way. All right, right off the bat, I can see this table's way too high for what we wanna do. So the first thing I'm going to do is set my height and we want 3 eighths of an inch. I'm gonna start a little below what I think will be 3 eighths of an inch and then we'll raise it back up. An easy way to do that is to set your combination square right at 3 eighths of an inch. Rest that on the table and then lower it until the combination square sits flat. And we're going to bring it down just a hair lower than we think it needs to be. Okay, next step is to set up my fence. So I'm just curious, if I set that right at zero, we're actually, that scale is off, so we're not going to use that scale today. Okay, it's showing me a different measurement than what really exists. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my scale again. We'll do the dado cut first, and remember that was three quarters of an inch away from the wood, so I want to leave three quarters of an inch. So using my combination square, measuring to the inside of the tooth, and measure three quarters of an inch. Now when I lock that fence, it might move left or right, so I want to double check it after I lock the fence. Okay, now you can see this is going to take two passes. I don't have my quarter inch dado blade on, and I know that I've got a group still using the eighth inch blades, so we're just going to make two runs with this. So I'm going to cut my first board, I'm going to check it, I'm going to cut every board at this setting and then move it over. So I have this one, make sure my mark's in the right place. I need to go get a push stick. Okay, and if I did this right, this is actually gonna be not quite deep enough. Okay, now we're gonna use it just like we use the table saw. Turn the blade on. All the way through. Okay, and there's our dado cut. And then what I want to do is use I can use this end of my combination square. Did we get three eighths of an inch? It is right at, if anything, it's just a touch too deep, but that's okay. It's fine for that panel to float in there just a little bit. Okay, so we have this one. We're gonna go ahead and do all of our cuts then. Okay, I want the dado on this side, so I'm going to flip the board this way. Now we need to move it over to get the second half of that dado, so it's a quarter inch total. So 
So we're going to take that combination square, set it on the fence, and this time we want to go to the outside of the tooth. So I'm going to look, set it right so it's on the 11 mark, right there. Set the fence now. See how the fence moved that time when I locked it? So I got to unlock it, move it over, lock it, so that that tooth lines up right on the edge of the one inch mark. So now it's exactly one inch. We're going to use our test piece first. Make sure you've got the notch in the right place. Right, we don't want to flip it upside down. And run it again. Okay, and you can see it made a nice clean cut. And if I reset my combination square, I can check it one more time. So it's right at three quarters and one. Before we glue this together, we are gonna test fit our plywood panel. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my other pieces now. on that side. All right, that looks good. All right, now we need to do the rabbit where the top of the box is going to sit. So that's at three eighths of an inch to the outside. So reset our fence now. And this fence needs to be replaced. It's been hit a few times. Normally when we're machining close to the edge, we'll use a sacrificial board. All right, looking straight down on that, at three eighths of an inch to the outside edge of the blade, we're gonna remove this section of the board. And this one I do want to lower just a little bit because remember this is a 16th of an inch too narrow. That's right at 3 sixteenths, and my depth is right at 3 eighths. Did I say 3 sixteenths? That's 3 eighths right there. Okay, this will be a total of three cuts now because we need to take off 3 eighths. Each blade width is 1 eighth. I could also take this blade off and add in the rest of the stack, but again, I've got other people using this at an eighth of an inch, so we'll leave that. Once everybody finishes their picture frame, we can come back and put a quarter inch stack on there. Okay, at this point, since we're not going an exact width, it's not super critical how much we space it. We could do a 16th of an inch each time, but for the sake of practice, I'm gonna go exactly an eighth. So I'm gonna take the outside to one quarter now. Really must replace this fence. This is really making it difficult to measure. Use the 32nd scale, I guess. That'll work. All right, I think I touched the blade and it was waiting for me. There we go. Make sure I'm on the right side, just to be sure. Okay, that works. All right. 
last pass. All right, there's a couple ways to approach this. Since I'm already below where the fence has been chewed up, we can go ahead and use this fence. But if this fence were intact like it should be, what we would do is we would add a sacrificial board and actually clamp it down on this, let the dado blade cut into it, and then use, it's called a zero clearance fence, which means the blade is literally right up against the fence and we can run our board by it without damaging the, the shop fence. But since this one is already clearly gonna clear the blade, we don't need to worry about that. Okay, this time we're gonna take it right up to the edge of the fence. And if we're using a sacrificial fence, it'd be the edge of the sacrificial fence. And we're gonna finish this out. It's not touching my fence, so I'm okay. All right, and that last little bit, we can clean that up with a chisel later. That's just paper thin right there, that's okay. Okay, we are just about done with our stock piece now and just about ready to make the miter cuts. We're gonna examine a couple things in the plan before we go on. This is the end of this video.